that was just magnificent. Thank you. Thank you Thank so, so much. much. Thanks. Well, it's great to meet picture. the voice after all these years. The it's voice of Dr. Hook, though, sounds like a ventriloquist act, doesn't it? <laughs> sounds like a whole other thing. Well, the thing is, you've been divorced from Dr. Hook for a long time now. 85 was the farewell tour, That's you know? Amazing. And I've got to tell you the truth. For a while, I almost resented the fact that I couldn't quite break away from it. Yeah. But now it's starting to dawn on me that we did something that was strong enough that it's, you know, it's hard to break away from it. So I, have, I should be... I should be somewhat flattered. Yeah. It's do a little you ever, frustrating, Do you ever still though. play the old songs? Or? Oh, yeah. There's, there's some of the old songs in the set. Yeah. But I really like doing the, the new things, because I don't want people to think I died 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I don't want to come back as a nostalgia act and do the Dennis LaCourier Please Remember Me yes. tour. So, you know, it's nice. And I also feel like if I just play the old songs, that in some way I'm telling the audience that life isn't any good now. You know what I mean? That we all always have to hark back to the past. Yeah. But life is great now, because here we are. You know? But, you know, a lot of people on a pragmatic level would say, well, you know, you'd have made a few dollars out of the, I mean, those songs. They're still being played all the That's time true. on the radio. No, and they right. are classics. Why not retire to the ranch, um, you know, raise horses, and, uh, and, and, and don't make any more music? Well, because I'm never one of those guys that wanted to get, you know, famous and rich and then go do that other thing I always wanted to do. This is really what I do. <laughs> and strangely enough, at 45, I've never been more serious about it. Mm. So to let people know that I'm serious about it, I want to play the new things because if I just played the old things, you know, I check my pulse. Yeah. Was that one of the reasons why you split up, really? Because the new things didn't fit in with the old things. Or? No, not really. The reason I wanted to quit was because we were on the road for 15 years for 300 days a year. What? And yeah, we really were internationally, you know, because we didn't have videos out then. They didn't rely on videos as much. So if someone wanted to see you in Australia or wherever, you packed and you you went there. And uh, I had a son when I came off the road who was 15 that I hadn't spent a lot of time with, and I thought it was important to do that yeah. for myself as, as well as for him. And just to have some kind of normal life, because as much as I resisted it, you start to think that you're as good as your last chart position or your last tour success or something. And I had to feel like I was more than just a chart position. Mm. So. Did it ever sort of go to your head at all? Do you become uh, a little bit egotistical or anything? No, no, I don't think so. Not any more egotistical than I began. <laughs> no, I mean, we have to have a huge ego to do this, to stand out on a stage. But my ego doesn't lie in walking in a room and dropping off my fur coat and having someone pick <laughs> it up. My ego, you know, I use it so I do a good job. And then I like, would like also, strangely enough, if I'm talented, I'd like to walk away and I'd like somebody to say, and he wasn't a bad guy either. I mean, that's, that's where my ego is. Yeah. But you have to have one or you wouldn't walk out there. Because you've actually written quite a lot of stuff for other people, haven't you? I'm starting to. I'm mm. starting to. I, I've written, you know, when I was with Dr. Hook again, I was on the road so much that I didn't. I didn't write. And by the time I came home, there was always a box of songs for us by well-known songwriters. Oh, really? you know, because once you start having hits, yeah. everybody wants in. So I'd come home and I'd look through the box. But then I realized I wasn't really expressing myself that much. So. Yeah, and so you, I mean, and the voice is another thing because you always sort of think, oh, blimey, you know, perhaps your voice starts to go at a certain age, but obviously it's it still... It hasn't. It's gotten, no? it's gotten a little better. I quit smoking, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and, uh, well, actually longer than that, almost 20 years ago. But it says, they tell you it takes forever once you quit smoking. I was going to say, it sounds, because it sounds like one of those voices that has had a few cigarettes and a few whiskeys. <laughs> no, but... That's what everybody always calls it, a whiskey voice. Yeah. I don't even drink. It's just ravaged. I've also sounded like this since I'm seven years old. Really? I used to answer the phone and say hello, and they didn't, could never figure it was me. Anyway, you're on tour at the moment, yes. aren't you? So we can see you in London could, tonight, Yeah, Mean think? Fiddler tonight, Brilliant. and Telford tomorrow night, and then next week we had to Glasgow, we'll see you up there, Scotland, Brilliant. and uh, Glen Rothes and New Brighton, all over the place. Well, it's been delightful hearing the voice again. I thanks. Thank thanks for letting me indeed. back in the UK, by the yeah. way. Where are you? Right there? Because I feel like I have a history here, so thanks for letting me back in. Anyway, stay with us. It's Glad Rags and Glamour after the break.